So this is all the pieces that I have together for the base of the easel. Um, these are some feet that I took off of an old, um, I think it was an end table or something. So it has a kind of a claw foot, uh, not really claw foot, just a big foot here. Um, I think it's gonna make a really nice, uh, add some detail to it. So these are gonna sit like this down on the floor. I'm gonna have them at an angle. They'll be turned out at 45 degrees. Um, this is the uh, base. This will run across the top of the feet here. And this is where the sound bar is going to sit on the easel. So this is kind of what I looked at this why, like this was, was your paint um, where you'd set your uh, brushes or bottles of paint or whatever you might have, like a shelf at the bottom of the easel. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to use that as the uh, shelf for the sound bar. So that'll sit right on here. This is going to be a skirt board for underneath the shelf. And then I got some uh, appliques, um, which I painted the same gold as the frame. So they'll get um, attached. Actually, I'm not sure which direction I'm gonna go. So these will get attached here to the skirt board to add some detail. Um, because the easel, I'm going to paint it. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking I used a very, very dark brown, almost a black paint for the rest of the Haunted Mansion. I'm, I can't decide yet if I'm going to paint this that same color as all the other woodwork in there, or if I'm gonna change the color of it a little bit so it stands out. I still have that to figure out. But either way, the um, appliques here, I wanted them to be like they were gold leaf applique. So this is the skirt for. This is the, this actually sits on top of the, um, the shelf here. You know, usually your easel kind of went in at an angle, kind of went up from the floor at an angle um, and crossed. So that's why this is set at an angle. This has a nice decorative edge cut on it. And I also routed out, uh, rabbited out a, a channel here in the back so I can take the wires from the um, sound bar, get them up to the TV without, you know, without seeing them hanging there. So they'll be hidden behind here because this act, the top of this is actually up behind the back of the TV so you don't see it. So I got two of these, one for either side. This is just going to be a detail board for, that's going to fit in the middle here. And I have another um, applique here to put on that. Just a little detail to, to jazz things up a little bit. This has a routed edges on it too. And then these are what the, these are the, the, the uh, uh, cor I mean, what do you want to call them, a corbel or the, the blocks, the fingers that are going to hold the portrait. So the, the portrait actually sits in, in here, and then these are going to get mounted uh, to these angle pieces, like something like that. That's how they'll be mounted fast to that. So that, and I have this all set up that I remember I said I want the weight of the picture frame to be sitting on here so that the TV doesn't have to support it. Um, I don't want that extra weight hanging on the TV. I want that frame to actually sit on here. So when I assemble this, I may keep it just a little bit low and then I'll, I'll cut a little shim or something um, to put in. I don't know if I'll put it out here in the front where the, uh, the trim was or if I'll hold it back here in the back where I had that pine frame around um, the frame. I think that might be a little more sturdy, but either way, the weight of the frame is going to be sitting on these um, uh, corbels or whatever you want to call them. So, I'm gonna get all this stuff sanded, um, nails filled, um, nail ho holes filled, um, get it all primed, uh, get the primer sanded down, um, and then, I'll, then I'm gonna assemble everything, um, probably have some other screw holes, nail holes to fill, and then I'm gonna get this whole thing painted. So that'll be the base of the easel. And then when that's all done, um, then I'm gonna do the, uh, the top of the easel, which sticks above the TV. All right, so I'm gonna get this uh, base of the easel um, screwed together. I have everything uh, fit, primed, sanded. 
Um, and I did it in pieces like this because it was so many, much detail work. I thought it was easier to sand the pieces individually um, and then put it together instead of putting it together and having to sand it all as one piece. So let's go ahead and get this glued and screwed together.
Okay, so there's the first part of the base of the easel. All right, next I'm going to put the skirt board on here. All right, so this is the first part of the base of the easel. I've already screwed this much together. And my next step here to, is to apply the uh, skirt board. I'm gonna put this on, I'm gonna run some screws down from the top. I'm gonna use my Craig jig and uh, drill some countersunk um, pocket holes uh, on the ends of it. I think I'm just going to use the uh, pocket jig here and uh, put some across the top here. Instead of spending time boring and countersinking holes down from the top, I might as well just do it all from the bottom. Got my holes drilled there.
All right, I've got a spacer. Um, I'm gonna use that to keep everything even along the front. There it is with the skirt board. Okay, next thing is this trim piece in the back. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use a pocket jig again on that. I don't know that screwing up in the bottom is gonna help much, so I'm gonna use a pocket jig to put that on.
is the bottom of the easel. So I've got some screw holes to fill. Um, you know, let that sit, touch up the primer a little bit, and then this is ready to go for paint. Um, I am going to spray all this. Uh, with all the details here, it's going to be much easier to spray it with my airless sprayer. Um, so I got to get the, uh, the top of the easel done next. Um, and then I also have, which I didn't show a, do a video when I made them, but I made these end tables. Um, we have a, a love seat in the theater room and I, we didn't have anywhere to set our drinks or remotes or anything. So I built this. I made the same detail here as I had done on the wainscoting, which I had done in another video, showed how I made that. So I made this detail here. Um, the top has a little bit of a lip around the edge and that's so your drinks don't slide off. I may actually do a uh, copper, um, I have some copper flashing. Um, I might antique and I'll show you how I do that um, with salt and um, apple cider vinegar and sawdust. I may antique some copper, copper inlay for here. And then in the front here, there's a recess so you can actually stand your remotes in the end of these um, end tables. And I have two of them made. And I didn't paint them before um, because here again, I wanted to spray them. And I didn't want to get the sprayer out for just these. So I'm going to get these all sanded up. And when I spray, when I shoot the um, easel here, I'm going to shoot some paint on these as well. So they're done. So in the last segment, I got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, I never attached the uh, corbels or brackets here that are actually going to support the picture frame. So I took what I had done down um, to the family room, um, to the theater, and um, I put this up against the wall the way it's going to be. And then I held these uh, uh, corbels up against the bottom of the picture frame. And then I marked here um, on this base where they were, where they needed to be. So brought them back up here to the shop. Um, I fine tuned them a little bit, um, you know, to get everything nice and even. And now I'm going to screw um, and attach these to the, uh, the base here of the easel. So um, I'm actually going to clamp on a guide here um, and then I can hold the corbel against it uh, so I can run some screws up through from the back and it doesn't walk away for me. So let's do that a while. All right, got that on. Now I can just hold my bracket. Right against there. Drill some pilot holes.
All right, there's the first one attached. You see an end view there. Do the same thing on the other end, the other side. It's done. So, got a little sanding and cleaning up to do on this, um, and that's ready to go for paint. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get the top of the easel um, screwed together here. I have the uh, Mickey Icon part. Um, this is that part that I took off the mirror. Just gonna flip this over.
All right, I want to get my straight edge and make sure it's all straight. pretty good. All right, there you go. So now this is ready for paint. So I'm gonna get my spray booth uh, rigged up here. I'm gonna I'm gonna spray this all with my airless sprayer. Um, it's so much detail to it. I don't want to hand uh, brush it on. Um, so I'm gonna get my airless sprayer out and, and uh, shoot all this stuff at one time. I'm done painting the pieces for the easel. Um, and I'm gonna start to. I have to apply these wood appliques that I got. I painted them with a um, metallic gold leaf spray paint. Pick this up here so you maybe see it a little better. So I have two down here at the bottom I'm going to put on, and then I have a little bit bigger one I want to put on the top there. So what I've done, I decided that these two here on the, um, the apron, um, I want to space them up about three quarters of an inch from the bottom. So I have a piece of three quarter inch pine that I'm holding flush on the bottom of the, of the apron or skirt board here. And the piece of pine that I found was actually the right length um, for what I wanted to do. So what I've done is actually evenly spaced it on the front of this um, apron or skirt board. And now I'm just going to hold the appliques even on both ends when I install them. And um, to put them on, I'm, I'm going to use glue. I just got a clear uh, Gorilla Glue. And I'm going to very sparingly put that on the back of the applique. Uh, you know, of course, because I don't want it to, to squeeze out the sides. <laughs> Okay, so that one's done. I'm gonna try and give you a little better picture of that. Now the one here was uh, was warped up a little bit, um, so I had to put that weight, put this chunk of steel on it to hold it down until that glue dries. So next, now I'm gonna start on that other applique. <laughs>
so I got all the pieces of the of the easel uh, finished. Um, I'm going to start to install the um, the top here, the easel. Um, I'm wearing gloves because I had some issues. This this topper has so many nooks and crannies after I was done spraying it, and of course after I was done cleaning my sprayer out, I noticed that there was some thin spots that needed to be going over. So I had to get my sprayer back out, reload it with paint, and then last night I hit it hit this with another coat of paint. So it's just a little bit not quite fully dry, so I'm wearing gloves so I don't mark it up. So um, I have some screws started here. Um, I've already figured out where the studs are in the wall. Um, I, I, uh, before I took the, I had the TV on the wall, I had the frame around it, and then I got a mark on the wall uh, for the height that I want this to be at, because this actually fits down behind the uh, picture frame that I made. Um, so you won't see the bottom of it here, see the screws or this, this uh, mounting board that I put on. So I can get this screwed onto the wall and um, then we'll move on to the uh, rehang. Actually, I need to, uh, I'm gonna put a, a bracket on the wall for some wire management, but I wanna get this done and then I'll work on that. top of the easels mounted. Um, next thing I want to do, I have a whole bunch of um, uh, power supplies and audio video cabling behind the TV. Um, so I need some way to, to support all that. So I'm going to put a, a piece of angle on. Um, I have this angle, it's probably about one inch by one inch, um, has holes in it. And I'm going to screw this to the wall and then, um, then I can use uh, nylon uh, uh, zip ties um, to fasten stuff to it. I'll probably hang my transformers from it and um, you know tie the, tie the wiring up. So I'm gonna screw this fast and I'm actually keeping it up a little bit high. The TV has a, um, the electronics to it are kind of on the bottom half of the screen. And then above that, they're really, the, the screen is, <laughs> Unbelievable, it's only about a quarter of an inch thick above that. Um, so I'm gonna keep this up a little high so I'm up in that space um, where there's uh, where the electronics for the TV are. I did drop my uh, impact driver on my toe. I hope I didn't break my toe because it really hurts. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um, get these uh, transformers and all fastened up. Um, this is the one uh, for the sound bar. I have another one for the LED lighting that I have on behind the, the picture frame. Um, and then I'll have the wire from the TV itself. So I think I'm going to take a nylon tie and just uh, support these power supplies, you know, something like this. And then I'm going to get all the wiring rooted um, around so I can hang the TV on.
supply for the uh, LED lighting for around the frame. Um, I'm just going to let that hang down here kind of in the middle. Um, it should be fine here. The uh, brackets of the TV should go on either side. Um, this is the power supply for the uh, sound bar. So again, I'm just going to let this hang down. Um, after I get everything else hung here, um, I'll zip tie these up behind the, um, the frame. Um, this is two HDMI cables that I have run. Um, these go over to a cabinet um, in uh, the uh, frontier uh, land area. Um, and uh, that's where we have a DVD player and we used to have our um, uh, internet uh, uh, router, um, but which we're not using anymore. So, um, so next here, um, I'm gonna get the TV hung. Okay, TV's hung. I have my wires all rooted the way that I want them to. Um, everything's plugged in behind it. Uh, wires are all secured up. Um, so uh, next thing here is to put the picture frame back on. Okay, there are the picture frames on. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is hook up the LED lighting, the uh, power supply there with the white um, end on and hanging down. Um, this is the wire for the LED lighting one that's behind the, uh, the frame. So I'm gonna get that hooked up next. And this has a real, um, real small kind of plug on it. I was having trouble with it pulling apart. Um, so I'm probably going to put it together and, and uh, wrap a piece of tape around it. supplies hooked up you can sort of start to see the color around there Alexa turn off haunted mansion lights so there you can kind of see the uh, LED lighting around it I don't know if it shows up real well in the camera all right so now we're going to get the bottom of the easel installed And there's some wires that are hanging down there. Uh, one of them is the audio cable to hook into the sound bar, and the other one is the power supply for the sound bar. So on the back of the easel here, I um, actually uh, cut a channel in here so I can uh, put that wire up through there and, and, um, and hide that. Alexa, turn on haunted mansion lights.
Okay. There's that. Now we just have to get the sound bar hooked up. All right, so just a little bit of a problem here. My wire, the uh, power supply wire, this one, um, isn't quite long enough. So I'm gonna have to reroute the power supply uh, for the sound bar. lights out here so you can see a little better the uh, LED lighting behind it. Um, I got my sound bar mounted at the bottom there. Um, everything's hooked up. I'm going to go ahead and turn the TV on here once. Alexa, lights, camera, action. There you go. So the LED lighting, um, actually I have multiple colors that I can make that. I think we actually like the purple, um, but there's a green. So I'll have to play around with that and see what looks the best. Um, I think we're kind of liking the purple though. I'm not sure uh, if you can see at the top, the LED lighting is not lighting the top of the easel very well. I'm not sure if I might not fool around with that, uh, aiming that lighting up a little bit um, so that it lights that up a little. I have to see about that. So I'm going to turn the lights back on. Alexa, turn on Magic Kingdom. So a couple of things here. The the back, uh, the main trim in the in the theater room here. I have a much darker, all but almost black. Um, it's actually a very dark brown, all but black. So that's kind of to blend into the background a little bit. The easel. Um, to give a little more dimension to it, I made the easel a, a little lighter brown, so it kind of um, makes it stand out a little bit um, from the other trim. So I'm you know, trying to keep the, the background dark, and then other elements here in the theater room, 
um, have a little bit more color to them so they pop out a little better. Um, so that's why I went with the brown there. Um, but I think that uh, pretty much completes that project. Now, I don't know if you notice, I have the uh, stretching portraits over here and they actually do stretch. So I have another video on them, how I built that. Um, over here on the other side of the room, um, I have the wings coating from the Haunted Mansion. Um, and I have, a, I have other um, uh, videos of how I built all the other elements here for the, uh, uh, for the theater room part of our family room. And then also, um, if you check out the other videos, there's more detail on, on the entire family room, which we're actually creating um, all the different lands of Disney World. Um, so our office is Frontierland, um, our game area and pinball uh, machine area, um, is Tomorrowland. Um, I have an area that I need to do yet for Adventureland, um, Fantasyland, and then um, we're going to have Main Street is in the back here. So those are all separate videos. Um, if you have time, check them out. Thanks. Have a great day.